Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with the master. Thank you for joining us this week. I would like to share a thought this entire week on the two things that are absolutely essential to success in a person's life from the Christian perspective. And here it is. God's role in making us successful and our role in making us successful. It takes divine human partnership. And I want to share with you this simple thought that I hope you will always remember. And here it is. God orders my steps, but it's up to me to move my feet. God orders our steps. And then we have a role in our success. We move our feet. And if God is ordering your steps, which God has promised to do, but you're not moving your feet, then we can cancel out God's great purpose and plan that he has for our life. Let's first establish that God orders our steps. And we'll look at this scripture every day this week. Look with me at the book of Psalms, Psalm 37 and verse 23 and 24. Look at what it says. The steps of a good man, and that's generic, that's gender inclusive of women as well. It says the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord and he delighteth in his way. So when God orders your steps, not only does God order your steps, but God takes great delight in the way that God is ordering your steps. And then verse 24 is critical also. Though he fall, which means that when God is ordering your steps, it is, that does not mean that there will not be adversity. There will not be times when things in life will trip you up. But though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. Remember that. In other words, because the Lord is ordering your steps, when you do trip up and fall, you're not completely devastated by the fall because God is holding your hand and God will lift you up. So God orders your steps. And let me tell you what that means, that phrase, God orders your steps. The steps of a good man is ordered by the Lord. That word ordered in the Hebrew that uh, is the word kun, K-U-W-N. In English, it would be K-O-O-N. And it literally means this. It's a powerful word when it says God orders your steps. It literally means that God will set you up. God will set you up. We serve a God who sets us up, who appoints us to blessings, who orchestrates and establishes things for our personal success. God orders your steps or God will set you up. And I don't know how God will set you up. It may be that, that God will introduce someone to your life or God will connect you with somebody. Um, it just God just orchestrates. And if you can look over your life, you can see the time where God has ordered your steps or God has put you in a situation to take your life to the next level, to really bless you. But after God orders your steps, God, it is up to you once he sets you up to move your feet. This is an example of this, of what I'm talking about when the children of Israel were crossing the, the, the Red Sea and how God set them up and they didn't know that they were being set up. The book of Psalms, Psalm 77 and verse 19 says this. Your road led through the seas, talking about the Red Sea. When Pharaoh was behind them, the Red Sea's in front of them, the mountains are on both sides of them. They're in a on a dead end, in a dead end situation. But your road, like a road, God opened the waters of the Red Sea, led them through the sea, your pathway through the mighty waters. God was setting them up. A pathway. Here's the key. No one knew was there. So when they were trapped at the Red Sea, God knew there was a pathway out. They didn't know there was a pathway out. 
God had was setting them up and they were unaware that God was setting them up. And there are times in our life when things happen, when we feel trapped, we feel frustrated. And we say, well, God, why have you led me to this dead end street called the Red, end, the Red Sea? Not knowing that God knew that there was a pathway, even though we were unaware of it. And then when that water opens up, you say, oh, my God, look at this. God has ordered my steps. God has set me up. But though God has set them up to cross over to the Red Sea, cross the Red Sea, enter into the desert in their trek towards nationhood, if God opened that water and they just sat there and looked at the water and didn't move their feet, then Pharaoh would have slaughtered them. Because after God sets you up or God orders your steps, it is critical that you move your feet. And that's what they did. God orders their steps. They move their feet. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 15 tells how they move their feet. It says, then the Lord said to Moses, why are you crying out to me? Tell the people to move their feet. Tell them to get moving. Then Moses raised his hand over the sea and the Lord opened up a path through the waters. And God will always open up a path for you through a strong east wind. God was orchestrating this whole thing. The wind blew all night, turning the seabed into dry land, a pathway through the sea. So the people of Israel walked through, which means God set them up. God, God ordered their steps, but they moved their feet and walked through the middle of the sea on dry ground with walls of water on each side. And, the, and they got on the other side because God ordered their steps, but then they turned around and moved their feet. So what this is establishing is that there is always divine human partnership. God's going to set you up. But once God orders your steps, you have to be willing to move your feet. Or put it another way, without God, I cannot. But without me, God will not. You do what you can. God will do what you can't. God will order your steps or set you up. And then you turn around and move your feet. And when you move your feet after God has ordered your steps or set you up, you will be utterly amazed at where you will end up in life. We're going to explore this thought the entire week. And so you put that down in a very conspicuous place. You pray, God, order my steps. And then God's going to say, I did the last time you prayed, you asked me to order your steps five years ago, but you're still in that, on that dead end job, in that situation you're not supposed to be in. And it's not because I didn't set you up. Don't blame me. It's simply because you did not move your feet. First Corinthians chapter three, verse nine says this, for we are co-workers in God's service. Co-workers. What's a co-worker means? That means more than one worker. One worker, of course, is God. God orders our steps. The other worker, co-worker with God is you and I. We move our feet. And when God orders our steps and we move our feet, great things happen. Amen. Don't ask God to, for example, Lord, order my steps to a job or a career, and then you lay in bed and you won't move your feet. Don't ask God, okay, God, I need to get my health back. And so God orders your steps and then you won't move your feet and go to the gym and take care of yourself. Don't ask God, God, order my steps. I wanna overcome COVID-19, but then you won't move your feet towards taking the vaccination. There's always a role for you to play. God does not waste miracles. God will never do for you what you can do for yourself. That would make us lazy. Depend on God to order your steps. And then after God does, you move your feet. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for making a path through the sea, a path 
We didn't know it was there. You did. And thank you for the example of Moses and the children of Israel who after the waters had parted, they moved their feet. Help us to be as diligent as to move our feet. We don't know, I don't know God, what doors you're opening. You're doing it though, you promised to do it. But I do pray, oh Lord, that all of us, once the door has been open, will move our feet. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me again uh, with another powerful point to ponder. Look, everybody needs a church home. If you don't have a church home, I'd like to invite you to become a part of St. Stephen Baptist Church. You don't have to live in Louisville to be a part of the fellowship. You could be a digital disciple uh, by connecting with us. So look, consider becoming a part. Contact us here at St. Stephen Church, newstart at sscalive.org. That's newstartsclive.org. God bless you. We're going to pick up on this theme again tomorrow. But until then, during COVID-19, don't you forget to stay safe, stay sane, and if at all possible, stay home. Peace and blessings. I'll see you tomorrow.